Hello there, folks. Welcome then to another episode of uh, Dr. Benji Videos, where he does tactics and stuff. I say another episode. This is the first video I've ever done like this, but I thought you might be interested regardless. Uh, so let's have a little look at what we used in the Swindon lot many times ago. It's up there. Look, I know if I look up there, I can, it looks like I'm looking at it. What a lovely tactic. Uh, so it's a 4-1-2-1-2 tactic, and it worked fantastically well in the uh, in the first few divisions, or the first, uh, mainly League One in the Championship, uh, of my Swindon lot save. Now, if you didn't watch the Swindon lot, I highly recommend you go and watch it. It's one of the, the forums to say it's the second best series uh, ever in all the series it's, it's just behind Top of the Pops 2 so I mean if you like Top of the Pops 2 then this is right up there with it I'm on a tangent so this was the team that we had uh, and how it played now I've switched it around a little bit to show you today because it works a little bit better this way I always found um, but this is the way they showed it as the best 11 so we played uh, with a back four uh, a anchor man just in front with two central midfielders a shadow striker interestingly uh, a false nine and a target man so uh, you can see here if I show you the tactic and how it works and how it operated that this is what it looks like in the tactics screen they, they change how it looks a little bit uh, in the best 11 and there are three main components three three main components that make this tactic work uh, as well as it does uh, so let's talk through those step by step now the first of these was uh, I had a, I had a player called Craig Tanner right who was the the best sort of shadow striker I've used on the game this year and you might think oh tell me more I don't, I don't know too much about Craig Tanner unless you watch the series you know all about Craig Tanner uh, this is Craig Tanner you might look at him and go 30 years old and this is what he looks like well he must have been pretty average at 20 and you're right he was relatively average compared to some of the better players on the game and I got I managed to get some fantastic seasons out of him if you look at the way he he went throughout his career and um, he only went into double figures a couple more times after playing for me in the shadow striker role and it's not only that he was getting goals in the team take a look at his assists 21 and 16 in back-to-back -back seasons um, and the championship he never quite lived up he, he came back to me uh, and I didn't play him as much uh, in sort of the later years but from Reading to Bournemouth uh, after playing for me you'd expect him to get better as he grown uh, as he grows up as he becomes a more complete player but you can see from the average ratings on that side that he just didn't he, he just he never quite lived up to what I got out of him playing him in a certain role in a certain way and that's the that's the key thing with football matches this year so you play players in their preferred positions they can do magical things and you can see here that Tanner's favorite position was the strength the, the, the strugger the shadow striker position uh, and he had all the attributes to do just that and even then they're not standout attributes they're just the attributes that suit his role so perfectly and I get asked a lot would you rather have a player that suits a role or is it better to come up with a formation and try and put players into it and I always believe that on this shift football manager play players to their roles it's the most important thing you can do uh, and, and that's what I would do if I were creating a new tactic I would look at the players I've already got and fit them into that team and that will come on to tomorrow's video where we look at the current Swindon formation the Swindon lot formation that won me seven competitions in one year um, and we'll talk about that tomorrow all these tactics will be available to download via the Steam Workshop there will be a, a link in the description but I just want to talk to you about them very briefly and tell you how they operate so the shadow striker role uh, is actually defined by Football Manager as the, the main goal scoring threat and which sounds strange because you've already got two front men so you need to have front men that complement the shadow striker you can't play a poacher and advance forward because they're all in the same space so that's why when I used to play it I used a target man um, and a false nine now the players I've got there don't quite suit although Pixie is ridiculous so he kind of suits every formation we'll talk more about Pixie tomorrow um so the target man would obviously hold the ball up, maybe give it off to the false nine, he would drop a little bit deeper, and then the shadow striker would come forward and burst through the sort of the two. So the two would almost split, and the shadow striker would burst through and become that third attacking threat and the main attacking threat. And I've always felt that if you've got a shadow striker that has a good first touch, good dribbling, and good finishing, then they will absolutely decimate. And you can see here that though Vidala isn't a natural at shadow striker, I'm sure there's no doubt in my mind that he would have the right attributes to be good in the role. And as you can see there, 18, 16, 17, 16s all over the board so he would he would suit a shadow striker role really really well and interestingly enough in tomorrow again once again in tomorrow's video you'll see that Vidala was used in a shadow striker role in a slightly different formation um so the, se the second thing I want to talk about is the wing backs um they have to be very particular if you've got fully defensive wing backs that aren't prepared to get forward that's going to be a problem um back in back in sort of the days in which I did it my full backs weren't particularly good defensively but they're athletic and that's really important you can see that the fullbacks i've got today are perfect examples of wing backs and what you need for your wing back they've got great acceleration great stamina uh like the, the the heading isn't that important the marking isn't isn't even that important but the work rate's fantastic the crossing and dribbling is important too as long as it's not like threes and fours at crossing and dribbling you'll be fine if you can get two of them i think you'll notice here that y Jovanovic and Contreras can both do the role relatively well like that's why 
<laughs> again i keep talking about it but in tomorrow's formation you'll see that his crossing and dribbling wasn't as useful later on but for this formation you need players that are quick athletic and can get forward and support an attack uh, and the reason for that is the third key to this formation is the anchor man now for this team here, I don't actually have an anchorman that suits the roles, but we'll use Anthony Azamoa uh, as our example for why you need an anchorman and why he suits the role so much. That he's basically playing as, on, in my mind anyway, he's kind of an auxiliary centre back. He allows the wing backs to push forward, he allows the two in front of him to be as creative as possible. You can have the two midfielders, like interestingly, if you take a look at the tactic again. The two central midfielders can basically be played as whatever you want. Um, as long as you haven't got them doing the same thing and one's playing a slightly more defensive role, like the box-to-box -box is slightly more defensive than the advanced playmaker, then it will work. It will just it will work because of the components in and around him. The front three act very much as a front three. The midfield two act as a midfield two. And you can try and work out the balance. Like This isn't the, the perfect formation. And, and the good thing about football manager is right that you can adapt and change tactics, uh, tactics and make them as unbreakable as possible and then you pick up an injury and then football manager does its thing right so if you've got an anchor man that sits in there and is defensively very good like you can you can almost pick it like for example i could play perez godoy who is a center back he's always been a center back he's never played as an anchor man position but center backs have the stats to play an anchor man position you can see there if his mentals were slight, slightly sharper he would be the perfect anchor man so sometimes you can fit a defender into or train a defender centre back if you've got say you've got four centre backs right and one of them is about 19 you don't really know if he's ever going to fit in change him try and try and mould him into an anchor man and it, and he'll play the role really well as long as his passing's quite good and his and his key like uh, defending attributes his positioning his heading his marking and tackling are good it will suit and he will work in that position um, and then the th and really the formation comes together as that and um, we will talk quickly about team instructions and the mentalities now the counter attacking mentality is entirely again to do with those wings backs it's to do with a shadow striker that as soon as you get the ball the shadow striker bursts forward the false knight pulls back the target man makes himself available and the wing backs create your width for you um which brings me nicely on to the instructions for this that i'm not playing wider i'm not trying to exploit the flanks they're not areas that we can dominate in um but if you retain possession again if you've got two ball player midfielders in the middle players that can be comfortable on the ball they're perfect for this they suit the, the, the formation down to the ground um work ball into box is quite self-explanatory if you've got players that can hold the ball up the false sign the the target man they will find the shadow striker and equally the shadow striker isn't just there to score goals you saw from the, the stats earlier that craig tanner was equally good at assists he was in the right place at the right time uh, and the strikers benefited from that too clear ball to flanks is just something i would do to relieve pressure especially if your team's not as good at defending um with this team i would never have clear ball to flanks because you just don't need it but in the lower divisions it's it's far better for the ball just to be hoofed clear even if you don't have wingers um than it is to try and play out of the defense because it just won't work uh look for the overlap self-explanatory you're looking for those wingers to push on uh drop deeper again applies to having a defense that probably isn't quite as good as uh, as this defense i've got right here close down more uh you want your midfielders to really press high that front three create havoc the, the amount of goals i scored in early in the early years of uh, or the early months of football manager from winning the ball back with the shadow striker with the false line with the target man it made such a difference and uh, and pressing on this game it's a little bit overpowered so adopt it as much as you possibly can uh, get stuck in and use time marking both similarly uh, the anchor man will do will do a quite a good job with that if he's got good marking he can sit on a man and and it creates sort of, like this formation would be really good to counter the formation i'm using as well interestingly uh, and higher tempo it is really up to preference i've always preferred higher tempo because it means you're closing down as a little bit more a uh, little bit more sort of purposeful and um, you're retaining the best uh, retaining possession with a little bit more sort of verve and a little bit more kind of you're trying to get the ball forward you're trying to create chances you're trying to get your wing backs forward uh, so they're, they're the instructions i would use as i say all of this will be in the description uh, in in the description of the video so if you're interested in trying it out again try and work on your player roles your central midfielders don't matter too much but that shadow striker those wing backs and the anchor man are the perfect reasons to why this formation works uh, and let me know how you got on with it try it out let me know tweet me uh, leave a comment on the on the steam workshop let me know how you got on with the tactic um and yeah feel free to check it out i guess that's that uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at another swindon formation uh, i'll show you it now we're looking i've got two swindon formations you see uh, tomorrow we'll be looking at this formation which was the dominant formation that i use so if you enjoyed the video please leave a like if you want to see more subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment section i've never done a video like this before maybe you'll like it maybe you'll think oh yeah i quite like it when he talks about tactics uh, let me know maybe i'll do some more of this sort of thing for Fort Magic 2016 so we love with care from me to benji i'm a lovely green screen goodbye I've noticed as I've said lovely green screen and looked back that the green screen started to uh, fail me. <sighs>
I fixed it now. This is the this is what you shouldn't do, folks. Don't record videos as the light changes outside. Mistakes were made. <laughs>